This is a low power view of a benign breast lesion called sclerosing adenosis. It's an important condition to correctly diagnose because it may resemble cancer on mammography, grossly and histologically. The term sclerosing adenosis refers to the proliferation of the glandular structures and the dense firm stroma in which these proliferating structures lie. It tends to occur in the third and fourth decades with an average age of around 30. The lesions may be multinodular and they can also be tender. Sclerosing adenosis has a firm consistency and may grossly re resemble invasive carcinoma. Histologically, sclerosing adenosis maintains a lobular pattern with uh, greater cellularity in the central aspect of the lesion than its periphery. The lesions have two cell layers and form elongated, compressed or distorted tubules, with the outer myoepithelial cell layer being much more prominent centrally. And these lie in a sclerotic stroma. One important thing to be aware of is that in approximately 2% of cases, there may be perineural extension. This is sometimes referred to as pseudo-invasion, but it does not imply malignancy. As we pan from the peripheral aspect of this focus of sclerosing adenosis, you can see that the lesion becomes more and more cellular as we reach the central aspect. At this higher power, the cells in the central area can be seen to be rather more spindle-shaped. And at an even higher power, you can see how the cells of sclerosing adenosis could easily be misinterpreted as carcinoma because of the distorted tubules and a rather infiltrative appearance. The most useful stain for diagnosing sclerosing adenosis is smooth muscle actin. This is the stain for myoepithelial cells. And the low power view shows a browner appearance of the lesion in the central area because of the prominent component of myoepithelial cells centrally. And this is a higher power view showing positive staining of myoepithelial cells for smooth muscle actin and negative staining of the luminal epithelial cells.